how would you describe yourself and, and two people? And I know you get asked this question quite a lot, but just in sort of, I guess, uh, cliff notes form, how would you describe yourself? Well, I went with imposter when I was on Dave Rubin. And I, I, I kind of like that because I think that uh, distinguishing between an imposter and a fraud is important to me. An imposter is somebody who may not have the credentials to be in a particular location, but has every intention of doing as good of a job as they can, if not better than the credentialed. Uh, so you're, you, may, uh, you may steal from the till, but you hopefully are going to put back more than you took by the time uh, the day is over. A fraud is somebody who's just you know, trying to fool you um, in, in an attempt to uh, enrich themselves and, and screw you over. I think that part of why I do that is because we've become extremely worried about anyone uh, deviating from his or her lane. So you hear stay in your lane uh, a lot these days. And with open architecture of the internet, uh, polymaths are particularly terrifying to people because they, they may roam around and opine in areas where they are not expert. And you, of course, have, a, have an issue there where um, you get a benefit from the per fact that the person isn't usually captured by the dominant uh, belief structure in that area, but you, that person has to pay it back uh, by virtue of the fact that they are not, in fact, uh, dedicated experts who stay only there. So in some sense, Ryan, not to be critical, uh, you are an imposter as a broadcaster. I completely, uh, I was just going to say, I'm an, I'm yeah. a podcast imposter, but I do intend, I, you mm -hmm. know, I don't wish I intend to actually become one of the best, at least in my rock and roll field. So, you know, and I'm, I'm listening to guys like you on, on your podcast, The Portal, to sort of grab tips uh, every single episode. Well, let me, let me just say one other thing about uh, the, the concept of the imposter. I, I've realized that a lot of uh, the world's genius is uh, riding on female shoulders and that women, by and large, have a bigger issue with imposter syndrome because they don't give themselves the same allowances generically to screw up. And so for a while, I was going around talking about the need to not worry about imposter syndrome. And I don't know that I was very effective. But by embracing the imposter label, one of the hopes was that as a positive externality, uh, a lot of people would say, OK, maybe I'm an imposter, too. Now I don't have to worry about imposter syndrome. So the, the secret uh, agenda behind calling myself an imposter is that if we could liberate the amount of uh, intellectual horsepower that's currently inhibited by virtue of people saying, stay in your lane or you, you don't know the topic and you're, you're jawing off, you're a bullshitter, all of that kind of energy, uh, imagine what the world could be like. So if people started to think of imposter as a, a, a wonderful thing, you know, to taking a name like the, you know, as was done for the word queer and spinning it around and turning it into a positive, then, uh, I, I thought that I could do no greater good in the world than to free up all the people who've been inhibited and, and have not taken their shot uh, on goal. Imposter is no longer a pejorative, folks. Imposter is a good thing. And we, 